Ladies and hey. gentlemen, Andreas in the building. Yeah, hell yeah. Hey, hey. What's up, buddy? What's up, guys? Thank you for Good. joining, dude. I'm BG. This is my co-host JB. We appreciate you being here. For those that may not know you, sir, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment, and uh, plug or promote anything you'd like. All righty. Uh, my name is Andreas. I am in Southern California right now. And uh, I'm just uh, some random bloke. <laughs> More than that, I would say. I would say you're a superb talent, sir. First, I want to start off by asking, how was the show last night? Did you get a chance to catch uh, Animals Fighting set? So uh, yesterday was like an absolute... Um, incredible. Yesterday was just an incredible day. Uh, I had such a blast and the sound of animals fighting is one of my favorite bands of all time and uh getting to watch them perform was incredible and i honestly i'm still kind of riding off of the high of yesterday where i'm just kind of like man i can't believe all of that like happened like it was it was an incredible day a lot of great opportunities a lot of great moments my first time playing at a house of blues venue and um yeah i'm just very like uh, like I said, like riding off of the high of yesterday still. Hell yeah. I, I appreciate you joining so much, man. We have a lot of local bands on the show, but your name seems to constantly come up. So I, that's why I really wanted to have you on, especially when we had a marionette on the show. They mentioned cool. you a couple of times. It's cool friends of ours. Uh, how, how did you first meet a marionette? Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> I, I love those guys and I've been really good friends with them for like almost 10 years. But um, yeah, I think about 10 years ago, I booked like my first gig in Las Vegas. And back, you know, like anytime you're trying to start playing gigs, you kind of reach out to other bands on the internet. And I had reached out to a band called Alaska. They were like this post hardcore band from uh, Las Vegas. And we kind of were just like, hey, I like your music. And they were like, I like your music. And I was like, hey, like, I'm from California. If you want me to book a show for you guys, I can do that whenever you want. And if you guys could return the favor, that'd be awesome. So they were like, yeah, we, we would definitely love to have that kind of like relationship with you. And this is all over the internet. And you know, you're like 18, 19 years old, figuring out how like music scenes work. Um, so this band, Alaska, they booked a show for me in um vegas at this taco shop because you know that's cool shows can, happen, shows can happen anywhere right and uh i was just chilling in the parking lot hanging out with uh some of the mutual friends and i ended up meeting one of the guys in a marionette and it was just kind of like random you know just a bunch of kids hanging out in a parking lot drinking box wine uh trying to play a nice. show and show their music and i met nick and nick is the guitar player for a marionette and uh just from then on we were friends and that's really all it is it's just we met each other 10 years ago at a parking lot that is awesome uh before we get into some of the more serious questions did you see my message about andy being the surprise today yeah what a that yeah. what a bummer he, he something came up and i think he's recording vocals for for Mac Macari Macari. Yeah, that but, makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But uh, that would have been fun because I wanted to talk about the track that you guys were on and how how you linked up with that one uh, with him regarding that that track. But uh, more importantly, let's talk about Cardigans and Split Ends, which is the the okay. new single you're pushing. How do you come up with the song titles? Um, man, I don't know. Uh, sometimes it, they they occur like so natural to me that over a period of time i'll actually notice that i've written like a few song titles that are are kind of similar and I, I don't even notice it it's kind of like a thing where it's like oh, i didn't even notice that um but i i have a song called uh, cold highs and screwdrivers and then i have another song called romp hymns and mimosas and so this song i guess kind of fits in that like category 
Love it. Uh, um, but I think I think like subconsciously, when I was in high school, I think I remember hearing like a lot of rap songs that had like this and this. Like I think that like Wiz Khalifa had like a song called like Kush and Orange Juice or something. Yeah, that was the name of the mixtape. That was the name of the mixtape. Yeah, yeah. It's my favorite one. And I think that I think that like throughout high school, I, I mean, I think our brains kind of function as like a computer or as like some sort of like algorithm system where a computer is like taking in information constantly. And then when you think that you're being creative, you're actually just kind of like your 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 computer program is like spewing out um an algorithm algorithmic decision to like just like do something or like say something that sounds artistic to you <laughs> i totally get so it I, think that, I don't know i think that like somewhere down the line um i think that i was aware that there was like songs and mixtapes that was like this and this and it was like very specific to the person, you know, Wiz Khalifa likes to drink orange juice and he likes to smoke Kush, Kush and orange juice. And I think that like somewhere down the line, my brain liked that. And like when I was writing a song, it was like, oh, um, you know, two things that describe this song, cardigans and split ends. And you got you got to be a stoner. Are you a stoner yourself? Dude, I'm I'm not actually I, really. I actually, I think it's hilarious. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just joking. I think it's I think it's hilarious that I'm on this podcast because I didn't really realize it was a stoner podcast. It's not um, really. We 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 dabble, but it's yeah. more we more focus on the music. Okay, for sure. I um I all my friends smoke weed, uh, but I myself uh I don't I don't smoke at all. It's all good. It's the most, yeah. the most important thing is you're kicking ass in the music industry and we appreciate what you're putting out. I'm going to queue up the... <laughs> I, I, I do got to say this. I, I got to say this. Like, it's not that I'm like against it in any sort of way. I just like, I tried it a few times and uh, I just didn't really enjoy it. I don't know. But like, I'm a, I'm a drinker. Like, I love to drink. Fair enough. We'll take so, it. So <laughs> I've, I've always, I've always just like resonated more with drinking. So. I'll, I'll drink to that. PG and I just smoke. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> JB, yeah, I there we go. Drink. There we uh, go. JB, I'll, I'll let you ask a question. I'm going to queue up the video for Cardigans and Split In so we can play uh, his music for people that may not have heard it before. Right on. Um, of course, it's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for being pleasure here. Meeting my friend. Um, with with all your music and everything, you you know you you talking about how you know long ago you started it. Uh, what what started on Andreas? What started uh, this whole music movement for you? Go oh, way back. So, um, I like you're talking about like all the way back, 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 or like more like as like a rebranded solo artist. Way back. Yeah, that that would rebranded solo artist. Um, I mean, I've been I've been really into music my whole life. Like, I've been obsessed with music. Like. Ever since I was a little kid, I, I played the violin, I played guitar, I played the bass, um, I played the viola. Like I was in orchestra, I was in jazz band in school. So like I, I have a classical training in music, but I was always obsessed with rock bands, and I was always obsessed in um, just rocking out and that whole culture. Um, and I was always writing songs as a kid. Like I wrote like my first song when I was like twelve. I was always just like writing songs in my room. And then when I was in high school, I, I was in different bands. And uh, I tried to do this band like right out of high school. And I, I was really like pushing for it. Like I was like touring and I was really trying to make it happen. And I realized that at a certain point that everyone in the group was kind of like holding me back in a way. Um, so then I, I was like, you know what? Like I should like just try to rebrand and try something new. So I rebranded as a solo artist. Cause I was the main songwriter anyways. And um, I was becoming more savvy to like how solo artists operate. Like people like John Mayer, um, where like John Mayer is the sole songwriter of his music, but you know, he'll hire like a drummer or somebody else to come in and perform the songs with him kind of thing. So I realized like, Oh, that's like an option. You know, I don't have to just be in a band. Like I can just, be the sole songwriter and then you know like hire people like as i go um and then so yeah i started like my solo career 
quote unquote, um, when I was probably like 2016. And um, everything that I learned from high school, like and afterwards, like about touring and networking and just trying to get your music out there, I just applied it immediately to where like I was just ready to go. Like I was like, all right, I have this song, I have this album, I'm gonna promote it, I'm gonna put my own money into it, I'm gonna book my own shows, I'm gonna play house shows, I play small venues, hustling play bars, hustling, and that. Was yeah, that was like that was like the initial thing, which is like to like start very strong. And I haven't stopped. Like I just the moment I like decided that I was gonna like rebrand as a solo artist, have not stopped playing shows, have not stopped releasing music independently, and I haven't stopped just hustling, just like doing whatever I can to uh try to get it out there. Hell yeah. Well uh let's go ahead and jam cardigans to split ends and then we'll ask you a couple more questions. If that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It just has such a fun like b- bounce bop to it where you just it just makes you tap your foot. It's infectious. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. The <laughs> idea was definitely um the idea was like pop punk meets um Lynn Manuel Miranda like musical kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure who who'd you say? Uh are you guys familiar with like Ham Hamilton? It's yes. Like a musical? I, I know the Broadway show, but I've never seen it. Okay. So, I mean, essentially like it's a very popular musical, but it's popular because like the music is so fun and accessible. And um, a lot of the things with like musicals is that the, the verses of the song are usually like conversations between characters. And uh, yeah, I just, I had this idea of making like a pop punk song that was like a conversation between two characters, almost like a musical. That's cool. I dig it. It's like a somewhat of a concept song. Yeah, totally. Hell yeah. Uh, Andreas, are you down to do a little trivia with us? Oh, I'd love to. Before I do the trivia, I need to know what movie or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. You get to pick. Okay. Um, TV show or movie? Yeah. In my opinion, it's easier to pick a movie because there's could be seasons and seasons of a TV show. If I, like, I look it up, it could be like some random question about episode four, season five, and you're like, I don't remember that shit. Oh, wow. Uh, this is pretty dope. I can't believe I'm like kind of freezing up right now. This is a great question. I'll tell you what, I'll stall and we'll play some no, more. No, let's, do, let's do Dragon Ball Z. Let's do Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I feel pretty confident about that. JB, go ahead and ask him your next question and let me look up some Dragon Ball Z questions or trivia. <laughs> I, I need a minute. I need a minute. Yeah. Right on. Um, so is there any any shows currently that you are allowed to tell us or any shows that you have posted uh, that you're allowed to promote right now? I don't have anything booked right now. Uh, and uh, it's not because I don't have any secret shit going on. I just literally have nothing booked. Um, the only thing I had booked this year so far was yesterday's show, the uh, the Sound of Animals Fighting show. Um, but yeah, nothing booked. And I'm totally just planning on like writing and recording an album for the next few months. Oh, right on. Do you have a pr- pr- uh, particular producer in mind or is you just going to self self do it i i've been working with um my really good friend his name is anthony he's actually my touring guitar player as well and for the last few songs and the last album uh he's engineered and produced all of my stuff so we've been working pretty pretty well together gotcha all right if i am able to stump you on this uh we we usually have the guests do hot sauce but i didn't i don't think tell you about that ahead of time so we'll just say chug chug your busy if i stump you uh, otherwise, oh, okay, yeah, okay, all right. Otherwise, I'll do. I'll drink some really hot, 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 hot sauce if uh, that happens. If I do not stump you, but regarding Dragon Ball Z Super, which of what is the who is the god of destruction of Universe Six? Who is? It's his brother. What is his brother's oh. name? Wait, it's his brother? It says oh, uh, Cha- uh, Chanta? No. You're it's you're off by one letter. 
Chow. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you. It's Champa. Champa. I'm gonna yeah, give it to you. Yeah. Well done. Whoa. Well done. Champa is the correct answer. Have you ever had the opportunity to go to Australia? No, I haven't, but I'd love to. We had some buddies on from Australia a while back, and they said, BG, you need to do a shoey with us. So a shoey? A, a shoey is where you pour your drink. In a shoe? In a shoe. But that didn't last very long because the shoe got gross. So now I do it from a flip flop. I now have to do that because you got the trivia correct. It's part as part of the rules of the show. I promise you'll probably never do another interview like this ever again. But hopefully you have fun. BG, BG, can you yeah. hold on for one second? Absolutely. Hold on. Don't do that for one second. Okay. I'll do that for one second. Oh, interesting. Is he getting a shoe? Suspense. Is he getting a shoe? This would be awesome. He just never comes back. It's like that was the last straw, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, BG, I can't let you do that alone. So I grabbed a, a brand new, fresh one. We're gonna do it together. Oh, you're awesome! Cheers, cheers. Let's do it. Party. Cheers, mate. Whoop. Whoo. Hell yeah. Oh. Ah, on. Dude, so you've worked Ooh. with uh, Strawberry Girls. I got, I got a little there. <laughs> Strawberry Girls, Andy Sizzik, all kinds of super crazy talented uh, bands and, and vocalists. Who Who's an artist or two that you've wanted to work with? I'll catch up. Give me a second. Who's an artist or two that you've wanted to work with? It just didn't work out because they were busy. They were on the road. You were on the road. The timing didn't work out. But who's an artist or two that you have in mind to for something in the in the future? Um, um, I think. Um, hmm. Tough one. Have you ever done anything with Donovan? Yeah, I have a song with Donovan. Okay. Um, I Donovan is like one of my best friends. I, I love that man. Yeah, he's a cool. We one. have we have a song together. Uh, it's it's called Multiverse Two, and Kurt Travis is also on that song. Kurt um, Kurt was on a long time ago, and he said he promised he'd come back if I ever got Chino Moreno on the show. He said I'll. <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll try. <laughs> we'll try. That's, that's a funny thing for him to say. Uh, he said that was his favorite artist. And that I was like, believe it. But that was not who we expected him to say. But uh, I'm sure he talked about his like experience with them, right? Yeah, he, he mentioned something about Chino called him into like a, a studio or something them. once for yeah. for like a like a melody. Mm -hmm. a, a melody something where they just went back and forth with the ways to say certain words and yeah that would that's kind of how he described it yeah have yeah, you ever yeah, done anything yeah. like that before like has that another artist ever contacted you just to like pick your brain about how to sing a song a certain way mm, um i think so yeah but like i'm very small situations um but i guess like talking about kurt um when he was working on his last album we were just kind of around each other a lot uh during that time period and it was just like so natural for him to be like hey like i'm working on an album uh do you want to come and like help help me out with it and i was like oh yeah i'd love to and I think that's kind of like one of the more notable experiences I've had where um, somebody was kind of like, yeah, I'm working on some music. You want to come and help me out? And I was like more than happy to. Um, and I ended up just doing like two features on the album. But the re like kind of the reason was is like uh, the way he was approaching the album was very like 
fun. It was just like, yeah, I'm just hanging out with friends, like writing music. And was this a I solo up, one or one of his many side projects? It's uh, it's a, it's a, it's his last solo record. Okay, okay. So yeah, he he kind of wanted to approach it like in a very fun manner, and I I thought that was really cool. And so he was like, yeah, if you want to come and like you know check out the songs I have and you know pick which one you want to be on, and I was like, yeah, that sounds great. And I literally just picked two songs and I ended up doing like features on them. But um, I think that my vocals were like the first things to have hit the song. So I think that like my vocals ended up being uh, a kind of like a guide, a guide for him to write his parts also. Makes sense. Hell yeah. Um... Yeah. So it was kind of I thought it was very collaborative and very fun. Uh, um, and I, I think uh, I thought that was awesome. I thought that was very cool. And, um, you know, I think if he ever does another solo album, I would also I, I mean, if, if he's ever like interested in doing something like that again, like a, a, a more collaborative project, I would love to be a part of it because, uh, you know, I adore everything that Kurt Travis does. I, I love all his music. Me, too. I, I totally 100 percent agree with that. Uh, we'll do we'll yeah. do final questions and we'll let you go, sir. JB, what is the final question you have for Andreas? My final question is what other than, you know, the the writing and trying to get this album out, what is your main focus for like 2023? Ooh, good question. My main focus for 2023 is to um, I guess like it kind of goes along with the album, but I really want the the new album to have like a big release. Um, everything that I've done up until now has been independent and I would like to sign a record deal this year. <clears throat> well, we're rooting for you. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that like the idea of signing a record label is always very, um, misunderstood because some people, they want to sign a record label because they think that it's what they absolutely need. And then other people sign a record deal for other reasons kind of thing. But I think that I've just kind of reached the point in my career where I would like to have a bigger budget behind uh, the promotion, the promotional aspects of what I do. And I think that like the best way to do that is to sign a, a record deal. But I feel like you have to have something to offer to a record label before you can sign a deal. So I feel like, I, I'm in a comfortable place where I think I would like to try to explore an option of a record deal this year. Chat says Blue Swan or Esque. It's got to be one of the two. S -S Chad? Chat, chat. Oh, the chat. Yeah, the chat saying Blue Swan or, or Esk. Is that how you pronounce uh, it? You know, I, I absolutely respect the hell out of both of those labels and everything. But um, I would like to explore. Um, I don't know. I, I just like to explore every option. We're going for Universal. You heard it here first. <laughs> no, I, I love Blue Swan and I love Esk and I mean I, I love Kurt and I love and I love Dance Gavin Dance and I love I love all the communities and um, I don't even know. You know, I don't know. It'll but happen. I, It'll I, happen. I, It'll happen for sure. Uh, this I want to is... explore. Yeah, I want to explore everything. Yeah. My final question for you, sir, and I appreciate your time, is uh, oh, yeah. it's, it's a serious one that I ask everybody that we have on the show. What is either A or B, a piece of musical advice somebody in the industry has given you that was you would consider the best advice you've ever been given or the worst mistake you ever made in your career that you don't want a local band starting up right now to make that may be watching? Can I just say something real quick? I just realized that you're at Patty's Pub right now. I am. So let's, <laughs> let's pour up another one. I'm at Patty's. Dude, <laughs> It's So Sunny is like my favorite show of all time. Hell yeah, let's go. I was, this Give entire hell, time, yeah. I was like, why do I feel like I recognize <laughs> where he's at right now? I'm at the bar just chilling. <laughs> and I looked right at it and said Patty's in the background. I was like, bro, he's at Patty's Pub. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's always sunny, man. Favorite show ever. We should have done trivia on that one earlier. But oh, oh, we just, oh my god, dude, I would have killed it's always sunny trivia. 
All right, we can do one more if you, if you think you got it in you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do one okay. more. Okay. Could you answer my question because I need to stall for a second? Yes, yes. I'll answer your question. Uh, you had yeah, it was a two parter. So Is you said A or B. Uh, the best advice somebody in the music industry has ever given you, or the worst mistake you ever made that you don't want a starting up band to make. Okay, so worst mistake I've ever made that I don't think starting bands should make is to pay is to play pay to p play shows. So when a promoter hits you up and they say, "Hey, you could play at our venue if you can sell this amount of tickets, but you have to give us the money like before you play." That that does not benefit anybody. That's literally pay. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that. It's called the pay to play show. Sure. We talk about so it when frequently. I was, when I was 16, uh, I got hit up by a, um, the Whiskey A Go Go, but it wasn't like the venue. It was like a promotional company that was in charge of putting events on at the venue. Mm -hmm. And so this promotional venue was messaging, they were targeting high school bands across California, just saying, hey, do you want to play at the Whiskey A Go Go? You can. All you have to do is sell a hundred tickets, and you have to give us the money for that before you play, kind of thing. And it was this really weird thing where I was sixteen years old, and I was like, "Mom, this is a great opportunity. I should do it." And they literally made me like come to the venue and sign this document that said that I was going to give the money to them before I played, or else I wasn't allowed to play. And I wasn't from Hollywood. I was two hours away from Hollywood. And I tried to sell as many tickets as I possibly could to my friends. But then I ended up, you know, spending the money on the rest of the tickets. And then I realized at the end of it, oh, my God, this is just like a scheme. And I ended up playing the show at the Whiskey A Go Go to just my friends. And I ended up paying out of pocket for like a bunch of the other tickets to play to just my friends in Hollywood. We're actually uh, pretty good friends with the guy that does the booking at the Whiskey A Go Go, ironically. But uh, we've had this conversation all the time, and, and we hear both sides of it, where some people say, you know, that's an opportunity to open up for your favorite band if they hypothetically do play the Whiskey, but then at the same time, in cert certain... Is it, is it the same promotional company? Because I feel like this promotional company is pretty outdated. This is like... This, no, talking it's, about like it's kind of like the standard now for them. It's the same thing, yeah. Oh, okay. But, uh... Well... But here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The shows that they would put together were just like bands from different places. That, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I get there, you. There was, no, there was no intention behind this show. It's not like we were opening up for anybody. Okay, so they're, they they more like do they now were, like a big band, and then you if you want to open for that big band. No, it was just like, hey, uh, we want to fill up this Thursday slot. Let's just like rope in a bunch of no names to play on a Thursday, like all together. I got you. But uh, it, it was very, it was very absurd. The most important final question of the day. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Okay. What yes. artist are Dennis and D listening to on the porch in the episode, the gang goes on welfare. Oh, it's, uh, you got what I like. Mother say he's just a friend. That is correct. Damn it. We were not <laughs> able to stump you, sir. Well done. Well done. I don't know that. I don't actually know that song, but I always remember that episode. I'll totally give it to you. That's Biz Marquee with Just a Friend. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks, dog. I appreciate that. Andreas, this is a blast, man. We appreciate you being here, hanging out with us. Uh, you will get signed. We believe in your brother. You're you're crazy talented. Uh, I had the opportunity to see you once, I believe, at the Chain Reaction many, oh. many years ago. I don't even remember the rest of the lineup, but you were fantastic that night. You were in California at the time. Yeah, I live in I live in uh, Victorville, up the up the oh. way towards Vegas, mm, probably like an hour and a half from LA, about an oh. hour from Anaheim. If you're going to Vegas, you know slap right. I think all the like the different time uh, zones that you included in the thing made me think you guys were in a different time zone. Now he's in yeah. JB's in California also. Oh, y'all are in California. Yeah. 
Oh, dope. Okay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, please. Yeah, I, live, I live next to Bakersfield. Oh, I, I, I really appreciate you guys. I think this is like the most fun podcast I've ever done. Really? Thank you, dude. I, t I know yeah, it's, it's very down. different this than everybody like, else's, but thank you. Hands down the most fun podcast I've ever done. I love it. Please, please check back in with us maybe six or seven months from now when the album has just come out so we can help promote it in any way possible. So down. Whenever the so case down. is when it when it drops. But hell yeah. Andreas, thank you so much for your pleasure, sir. Have yourself a fantastic day. Give me a hell I love yeah. you guys. I love you guys. We love you. You're awesome. Hey, you guys have a beautiful evening. You as well. You too. Much love. Stay easy, y'all.